Did you know that from the beginning of time, God had a plan for your life? You see, before creation was ever a thing, God had it in mind that he would create humanity unlike anything else he had ever made. He would create humanity in his image. The image of God is Jesus Christ. God's plan from the very beginning was to give you and I the free will, the free choice of being able to choose to follow him or not so that we could be in a real relationship with him. God was not surprised when Adam and Eve decided to sin and fall short. He didn't go to plan B. He didn't go to any other plan. He just had the plan. The plan from the beginning was that he, through his son, Jesus Christ, would come into the world to live the life that you and I should have lived but could not, to die the death that our sin deserved, and then he would raise from the dead. And that is the good news of the gospel. In John chapter 3, there's a guy named Nicodemus. He's a pretty well-to-do person. He's a scholar. He knows his Bible, and he is, I mean, he's praised among the community. He's a good guy. And Jesus has this meeting with Nicodemus. And Nicodemus wanted to meet with Jesus at night because he was actually nervous and concerned about what the other people would think, you know, the people in his community and his colleagues. So Jesus agrees to meet with Nicodemus. And Nicodemus, he, he knows that, that Jesus is not just some average guy. And so he says to Jesus, you must be from heaven. You, you must be from above. You must have something to do with God, you, the teachings from God. Nobody could know these things, could teach these things, could perform these miracles unless they were from God. And Jesus just cuts to the point. And he looks at Nicodemus and he tells him, Nicodemus, if you are to ever understand, if you are to ever receive the kingdom of heaven and eternal life, then you must be born again. You see, Nicodemus was obviously stumped by that, but I think he kind of got what Jesus was saying. And the reality is this, is that Jesus was going on to tell him that your spirit is dead. The Bible tells us that our bodies right now, they may be alive, but our spirit is dead because of sin. You see, God was not surprised by sin. He knew it would happen. Some people say, well, if God is so good, then, then why is there so much evil in the world? Well, God is good regardless of what evil is in the world. God is righteous and he's holy and he's perfect, but God didn't create evil. God created free will in the hearts of men and women. And from that comes evil, comes sin. And so the reality is, is that right now, if we're not in Christ, then we are dead in our sins. It doesn't matter how good you are or how bad you are. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter even what your sin is. Here in the United States, we're so obsessed with everyone else's sin. What's your sin? Is it sexual sin? Is it, is it, is it, is it lying, cheating, stealing? Is it murder? Are you a Christian? Are you a Muslim? Are you an atheist? Are you part of the LGBTQ community? Are you, the list goes on. But the reality is, is that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, no matter who we are. And so God's plan from the beginning of time was to send his son, Jesus Christ, the image of God, who we are made in the image of, so that he would come into the world to live the life that we should have lived, but we couldn't because he's perfect and we're not, to die the death that our sins deserved, and then he raised, he raised from the dead. You see, Jesus goes on to tell Nicodemus something extraordinary. And you may have heard this scripture before, but not realize the context of it. He says, Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son to die for you. That if you 
you who are watching this now would believe in him, you would not perish but have everlasting life. You see, because of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, who is God's fullness dwelled upon humanity, we have the forgiveness of sins. Jesus came and he was perfect. He lived a perfect life and he was betrayed. And this was all prophesied in the scriptures. We knew this was going to happen. The Messiah, the son of God, Jesus comes. He's betrayed. He's brought before Pontius Pilate and Pilate looks over at Jesus and he says, he asks him this question and then Jesus doesn't even respond to him. And I'm, I'm assuming that Pilate gets a little bothered by that. And he says, don't you realize that I have power to give you life or to take your life? And Jesus lets Pilate know very quickly that you have no power over me than what has been given to you. You see, Jesus says that no man takes my life. I lay it down on my own accord. Jesus is then flogged. He's beaten to a pulp. He's unrecognizable in agony. He carries the cross to a place called Calvary and he's nailed on that cross. And the worst part of all of that torture was not just the pain of the nails being driven into his hands and into his feet. It wasn't just the crown of thorns that was placed on his head because they mocked him for being the king of the Jews. It was that Jesus bore our sin and he became sin. That means that everything that you and I ever did or ever will do was put upon his body. And Jesus became sin and he experienced the weight of sin on his broken and beaten body. And he was hung on the cross to die for you and for me. And when he was on that cross, he thought about you, about how much he loved you, about how much he went to the cross to endure, to endure the pain for your life, to buy you and I back so that we didn't have to, have to be a slave to sin. Jesus, right before he dies on that cross, he says some powerful words. He says, it's finished. Jesus meant not that his life was finished. He meant that God's plan of salvation for your life was finished. It was complete. It, your sin, your sin's been paid for right now. Your sin as it stands has been paid for. You just have to receive that gift of salvation. And it comes through one name and that's Jesus Christ. So Jesus dies and in three days, he raises from the dead. You see, all other religions in the world have, have a dead God or a dead prophet. But Jesus is alive. It was prophesied that on the third day, he would raise from the dead. And that is exactly what happened. The tomb was empty. Jesus rose from the dead. And then hundreds and hundreds of people saw the risen Christ. And that is good news. And because of that, God says that if you and I will confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, then we will be saved. And that's what it means to be a follower of Christ. That's what it means to be a Christian. It's not a set of rules and obligations. It's not, it's not God saying you have to do all these little things to get to me. That's what religions across the world say. But God, God looked upon us from the beginning and he said, nope, it's not going to work. It didn't work for the ancient Israelites. It's not going to work. I'm going to send my son, Jesus, to die in your place. You see, this relationship that you can have with Jesus Christ can begin right now. I want to explain to you how, how God has expressed himself to us the best that I can. You see, there's God the Father, 
We have the Holy Spirit of God and we have Jesus Christ. God wanted you and I to be able to have the perfect example of a human being and give us this, the, the forgiveness of sins through perfect blood shed on the cross. And that's why he used a man, Jesus, and used his Holy Spirit to be incarnate into the life of Jesus, to fill Jesus up with the Holy Spirit. When you and I believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and we repent of our sin, God not only forgives us, but he comes down through his spirit and lives within us. The Bible tells us that we are a temple of the Holy Spirit and he helps us in our weakness. We can live this Christian life not on our own will because I can't live the Christian life on my own, but I can live the Christian life through the spirit of God. And Jesus gives you that opportunity right now to begin a relationship with him. And you might say to yourself, well, <laughs> I'm not good enough, or I don't know, man, I need, I need some more proof, or I, I, need to, I need to be able to, you know, kind of really think and chew on this for a while. But here's the thing. You can't come to Christ whenever you want. The Bible makes it clear that the Spirit of God must move inside you to receive Jesus. And I'm asking you to receive Christ right now. There might be a stirring in your heart or in your mind and you feel something within you. That's the Holy Spirit moving within you. And he's calling you. He knows everything about you. He's, no, he's known every bad thing you've ever done. He knows every bad thing that I've ever done. I, the person who's telling you about this great news, fall short of God's standards all the time. I do not do it on my own strength to live this Christian life. I choose Jesus and the spirit of God that has changed my life. And God will do that for you right now, no matter who you are, because he loves you. The Bible tells, tells us that as far as the east is from the west, so far God has removed our sin from us. And you can have the forgiveness of your sins and begin a relationship with Jesus Christ right now. I'm going to ask that if you would want to start a relationship with Jesus to pray this prayer with me. And I want you to know that it's not simply just a prayer. It's just, it's the posture of your heart. It's the willing to repent of your sin and ask God to come and help you. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I thank you. I believe that you lived and that you died and that you rose from the dead. And I ask that you forgive me of my sin. Make me new. I pray that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to follow you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, the Bible says that you are a new creation. As far as the east is from the west, so far God has removed our sin from us, your sin from you. You see, we were going in one direction from God, and then we turn in repentance and follow him. This Christian life is not an easy life, but he helps us in our weakness. You and I will still fall short. We will still sin, but we get back up and we ask the Lord to help us. If you prayed that prayer, I'd love to be in contact with you. You can email us. You can send us a letter. You can let us know that you made a decision today to follow Jesus Christ. We would love to get in connection with you. We'd love to help you find a local church wherever you live, wherever you're at on this planet. We would love to, to help you find a good, faithful, gospel-believing church. And we would love to get a Bible in your hands. Thank you so much, and God bless you.